Okay, now let's check out Planner 2's CV inputs. Planner 2 has three distinct CV input modes to offset the position of the joystick. Each input has an attenuverter to control the amount and polarity of modulation applied. The white mode button toggles between the different options which include Cartesian, Polar, and Scan. Cartesian is the mode utilized by the original planner, where CV1 controls the x-axis position and CV2 the y-axis, perfect for creating auto pan effects or making things wobble. Polar is spin cycle mode. CV1 now determines the joystick's 360 degree rotation, while CV2 sets the radius, with zero volts at the center and higher voltages pushing the position out to the edges. This can either add a subtle rotation to your gestures, or with the joystick deactivated, you can move it in perfect circles. Rather than using CV to directly control the position of the joystick, Scan Mode uses CV to control the playback position within the recording. For that reason, Scan Mode won't do anything unless Planar already has a recording. With a recording present, CV1 is able to scrub back and forth through your recorded gestures as slow or as fast as you want. Zero volts corresponds to the start of the recording and plus or minus five volts to the end. So rising values from Quadra will play forwards and falling values will play backwards. Or we can use a tetrapad fader to manually scrub through the recording and pause at sweet spots. Bipolar signals like LFOs will play forwards and backwards. CV2 determines the linearity of the timeline while scrubbing. With nothing connected or zero volts provided, the timeline is linear from start to finish. Positive and negative voltages push the timeline to become logarithmic or exponential and skew the playback response. So by using this bipolar fader from Tetrapad, I can push up to achieve a logarithmic response or pull down for an exponential response. With an audio rate saw or triangle wave source to CV1, you can even use scan mode to draw wavetables and use planar's X and Y outputs in bipolar mode as a stereo oscillator. In this case, it helps to use an attenuator before running the oscillator into the CV1 input. So that wraps up our overview of how to use Planar 2. Please let us know in the comments section if you have any Planar questions, or if there's anything you want to see demonstrated in a future video. Thanks for watching.